Okay guys, as you all know, Michelle's on holiday and what she's using her holiday for is boot reading. So consequently, she's read a few boots. So we have boot reviews. <laughs> I've been off work since well I finished on Friday and today is now Wednesday so I've been off work for five days I suppose so the first book that I have finished recently is uh, The Last Namsara by Kristen Cicciarelli is this was one of my fairy loot books it follows the story of Asha and Essentially, it's involved in a world where dragons are real and they're also a real threat. And you have the Namsaras and you have the Ishikari. The Namsaras are focused on life, they're life bringers, and the Ishikari are death bringers. And Asha goes through the story as the Ishikari. She is the person who hunts down the dragons. And the story follows her through the plot. Um, and in the end, she finds out that everything that she thought she knew about her life was a lie. It's the first book in a series. The second book is out end of this year, September of this year. Quite looking forward to it actually. Um, debut novel by this author. Um, it's actually very, very well written. The cover art is gorgeous. I don't know if you can see on the screen too well, but it's actually foiled all up here so it's shiny um, just a really good book I love a book with a really good strong fierce female protagonist um, did I do did I do review Forest of a Thousand Lanterns I'm not sure I don't think you did actually I read that as well uh, last week Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie Dow which is another of my fairy loot books. And while the female protagonist in that book is strong and she is fierce, she is an anti-hero. She is essentially the villain of the piece. And that, that that's why I'm bringing it up. Um, and I don't like that. I don't like the book written from the perspective of the bad guy. I'm like most people, we want the good guys to win in the end, so. Um, so yeah, really good book. I gave it five out of five on Goodreads. Um, if you're a young adult, I would highly recommend you give it a read. So I finished that one. And then today, I finished Eating the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. This was, I think, the first fairy loot book that I got. Might not be, I might be lying. Um, and this one, again, fierce, strong female protagonist character. Um, this follows the... I've just finished reading it today. Kamsen. Her name is Kamsen. It's set in... Uh, I suppose you could kind of call it like an old imperial China setting. There's an emperor um, and the have outlying districts. And Kamsin is a young girl who is training to be a shaman. She's not very good at it. And her best friend, Tim, who is a yak herder, and he's a very, very good shaman, but he's not allowed to be the shaman because only people who are tied to the elders are allowed to be and Kamsin's dad is one of the elders of the village that she lives in. 
there are some sort of other outlying characters. There's the the Royal Explorer, a guy called River, um, Camden's sister, who is a bit boring, and uh, one of the other characters as well, whose name I've forgotten as well, which is really terrible. This is how I can read and reread books. Um, it's because I uh, I forget what I'm what I've read as I finished it. Anyway, so the book largely follow, follows Cam's and the book is about her and her adventures. Um, and she ends up going on a long journey um, to try and search for uh, a talisman which will keep the witches in the Nightwood. Because the witches have been spelled to stay in the Nightwood but the spell is failing because all spells have to be renewed over time. And it's got a real twist in, in the end of it, which is, is really, so it was actually so surprising I didn't see it coming. So this is a duology. So the, secret, the, the sequel to this book is out in January of 2019 uh, in the UK. I don't know whether it will come out earlier in the US or not, they don't tend to do worldwide releases. It tends to be the US gets it first and then the UK gets it second. Um, but they're usually not too far apart. Um, I really enjoyed this as well. I gave it 5 out of 5 on Goodreads. You tend to find I give most books 5 out of 5. If I managed to read it in a relatively short space of time because I couldn't put it down or because I wanted to see how it ended, it gets five stars. I'm not very discriminatory when it comes to books. I either love them or I don't. I have to apologise for the batteries going. Yeah, I apologise. My cameraman didn't make sure his equipment was okay. So yeah, so I wouldn't take too much about my ratings into consideration. Like I say, I either love them or I don't finish them. But this was also a really, really good book. Um, again, debut novel by... Uh, a new author there was my phone sorry um, and like I say it's part of a duology so a um, bit of a cliffhanger at the end so I finished that today and I have started on something slightly different this is the butchering art by Lindsay Fitzharris and this is all about how Victorian medicine um, it says, Joseph Lister's quest to transform the grisly world of Victorian medicine. So the book starts at the groundbreaking operation carried out by Robert Liston in 1846, I want to say, correct me if I'm wrong, which, uh, in which the surgeon, Robert Liston, amputates uh, a man's leg. Um, above the above the knee but it was the first time that ether had been used in surgery unfortunately because ether was such a success in dulling pain Robert Liston is, is, has been uh, attributed as saying that they have, they have uh, they have mastered pain they have overcome pain the problem with it, the problem with that is, is that as people who have um, read about Victorian medicine, is that surviving the operation is only half the story. That you then have to survive the infection. They believed that pus was a sign of healing and not a sign of serious sepsis. So it's all about Joseph Lister and how he revolutionised. Uh, surgical procedure you know basic things like washing your hands and your tools and not wearing um, the same apron to do all of your operations Robert Liston is is was famous for wearing the same apron to do all of his operations and you smelled him before you saw him uh, so yeah so that's what this book is about which is somewhat of a departure from the all the young adult fiction that I've been reading recently but I had this one on pre-order and it arrived last year so this is one of the books actually all three of the books are on my Goodreads uh, 
52 for this year where I set myself the target at the beginning of the year of reading 52 books that I already owned and hadn't actually read. So yeah, so um, I'm only about 30 pages into this. It's going to be a much slower read than the two that I talked about earlier. I'm also working my way through Wizard's First Rule by Terry Goodkind on my phone as a sort of read a bit, listen to a bit, read a bit, listen to a bit because you've got Whisper Sync for Voice for Kindle and I own the audiobook and the Kindle book and a paperback copy as well which is on my shelves next door. Um, so that's um, something different again, not so much young adult but definitely in the sci-fi fantasy genre. I started reading I'll Give You the Sun can't remember the name of the author off the top of my head, apologies. It was recommended to me by my good friend Leanne, but I'm not in a place to be able to read that book right now. It's very, very depressing. Um, I'm still slowly but surely working my way through my book on the Holocaust that I bought at the Imperial War Museum. Gosh, how many years ago would that be now? Probably about three, four years ago. Something like that, yeah. Good few years ago now. But it's like, you know, four inches thick. It's insane. Well, four inches thick. Sorry. Um, and it's it's mental. Um, really small text. It's basically a factual account of the entirety of the Second World War um, from the perspective of the Jewish people who were persecuted at the time. It's a hard read. <laughs> a very, very hard read. And I can only sort of pick away at it in small doses but I have got the single minded goal of finishing it before the end of the year <laughs> so if I get it done by the end of the year I'm going to call it good so yeah so that's just a brief not so brief apologies update on what I have been reading recently um, if any of you guys out there are, are readers uh, let me know what you're reading. I'm always looking for new things to read. I can see Alan behind the camera shaking his head going, don't recommend anything. She buys enough books as it is. Um, but yeah, if... Uh, well, you've got 50... You're reading 52 books that you've not read from yeah. your own. Yeah, and I've read 12 of them now. And how many DVDs do I own that I've not watched? Quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> not 52. I bet you I could find 52 but without trying be. too hard. Probably. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> um, but yeah, what are you reading? If you read. Um, I know not everybody does. But if you are reading or listening to any audiobooks, uh, let me know. I'm always interested to know what's out there and what other people are reading or listening to or podcasts. I'm always looking for new podcasts to listen to. Alan um, tends to think that my podcast, uh, the podcasts I read, te uh, listen to tend to run to the morbid. I like podcasts about. There's a couple of podcast ones, uh, serial killers, um, cults, and female criminals. I am a murderino. Shout out to all the murderinos if you're out there. Uh, stuff mom never told you. Stuff you missed in history class. So yeah. Anything like that, let me know in the comments below. Moving on. <laughs>